G'day guys, it's um, Ricky388 here. This channel is um, the um, new way of um, approaching um, studies. Uh, gone are the days of the um, conspiracy theorist. Now you are held accountable. So, in my line of work as a professional truth seeker, if you make a um, statement, your subscribers or the public can say to you at any time, so tell me, Ricky, how did you conclude this? And at this point, one has to produce a very um, convincing argument without any fiction or any ego with the use of academia, history, and logic. And as I'm a spiritualist, I acknowledge God, but not religion. Um, I also use uh, a system whereas I use a minimum of two sources. For example, do you remember Edgar Casey? Well, he wasn't a one-off. This ability that he had to answer up to 5,000 questions without hesitation on matters of higher learning. Now, think about that. There's over 5,000, um, there are these books with all of his work on it. And so one of my sources is also um, somebody who has the same ability. It's called Quantum Meditative Translation of the Akashic Record via the Higher Self. Basically, what happens is, we are surrounded by atoms, correct? And so, in the air, when I clap my hands, the atoms are like snooker balls on a table. They hit each other until eventually, at the very compounds of our dimension, which is matter, these atoms hit the walls of our dimension. Unlike the dimension which is the um, um, heavenly fields. This dimension is no, has no matter. It's all electrons and protons. And so, remember the film um, Gods Must Be Crazy with the Kalahari um, Bushmen that would do those clicking noises and go and, and they would spend eight hours hunting a deer and then they would give it nothing but respect. These guys could track like nothing else. Well, basically what happens is, this other gentleman who's the same as Edgar Casey, he can be approached under a trance and asked questions. And he refers to himself in the dual, we um, and we are, that sort of thing. Because what happens is, in the speed in which he answers these subjects, he goes to the Akashic Record to find out where all information is. Just like in the desert, all the animals that ran by the billabong or the watering hole, all their footprints are there. And so, the, whatever the question might be, he then takes his higher self that can translate and then goes to basically the um, hunting ground with all the um, um, tracking um, marks on the ground. And so um, when he goes to Akashic Record, he can answer questions on everything that's ever happened in history. Now, when three people bullshit egotistically, do you know what the statistics are of all three of them making up the exact same bullshit? Okay? And so, the exciting part is when you compare Edgar Cayce's answers with the, um, the doctor's one, which I'll introduce you guys to later, and all the data, plus um, people like... Um, um, David Wilcock, who is um, who is channeling the um, law of one, and all the data from spirit, 
It's all the fucking same. Now, if they were all egotistical, fictional, bullshit artists, they wouldn't be possible. And I'll tell you one other thing, too, you might think is crazy. Of all the things in heaven and earth, the truth is more profound than any fiction you can think of. So that when I first was introduced to David Icke, I've been a practicing um, a truth seeker for many, many years now. I developed my own system and I did a lot of um, free online courses with universities and FBI on deception, micro muscle movements, that sort of thing. For him to get up on stage for five hours and bullshit for five hours is statistically almost zero. In passive, um, passive um, interrogation that the FBI use, if they have a suspect and that suspect says, Yes, I, I went past the building, but I didn't see nothing. And then the detective will say, okay, so tell me, when you went past, was McDonald's open? Now, quickly, the, he has to invent a new piece of bullshit to keep up with the questions from the detectives. Now, eventually, he's going to slip up juggling and drop a ball because it takes effort to bullshit. But to speak the truth, it requires no effort whatsoever. And so the new age a truth seeker system has no um, ego, no emotion, and, and especially you, um, I thoroughly teach my, my, my subscribers on the art of um, mindfulness. Now, when investigating a subject which is uncomfortable or outlandish, one has to, has to practice mindfulness. Now, mindfulness is basically, let me take you back 15 years to alternative news um, sites like um, Alex Jones, for example. Now, I noticed 16 years ago that with Alex Jones, that the comments were nothing but a hate and attack for everything on video except the actual subject. And everybody failed to acknowledge that he would, when he would bring a story to the table, there would be a stack of files related to that subject on the credibility of the information supplier. When I realized this, I wondered if I too was having a knee-jerk emotional response. Now, this comes from when we were children. The monster under the bed, as children, represented the unknown, the unknown. Now, but we know as adults that whether or not the light was on or off when you were five, six or seven, had no bearing on whether the monster was there. And so, for example, I ever heard a conversation in a hotel once where somebody, I heard the word ghost mentioned, then a nervous laugh followed by a minor insult. And then I heard the person um, challenge the, per the other person. And then that guy says the following, because he'd never seen a ghost, he didn't believe in them. And I thought, what a fucking stupid thing to say when, for example, look at all the weird fish down in the, um, um, oh, what's the name of it? It's the deepest part of the ocean. Look at all the weird creatures and stuff down there. Now, if I told you about them and you were in denial that they exist because you'd never seen one, doesn't that make you ignorant? Now, let me give you another example. This is a parable. In Ayers Rock in Australia, there is a tribe. And the elder of this tribe 
his whole life he has encountered travellers. And as the travellers come by, they all speak of a billabong that goes on for eternity. Now, a billabong is a body of water. And so in his old age and wisdom, he realised that, that the odds of all these people making up this bullshit are highly improbable. Anyway, what they were describing, the billabong that went forever, was the sea, the ocean. Turns out it was correct because he concluded with logic. Okay, and so the art of mindfulness is when one watches one's own mind with one eye on it catching it, doing things that we had just spoken of. And when you catch yourself doing it for the first time, you are going to be so embarrassed and insulted by what you've just witnessed about yourself. But instead of being in denial of it and saying, I'm perfect, acknowledge it. Because within two weeks, you will have mastered it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, now then, I would like to now talk to you about the subject of um, reincarnation. I like to talk in parables because they help people understand a lot. Now, imagine that there, hypothetically, that there is a um, off-world society that has mastered um, pollution, poverty, crime, death, illness, all those things. Yet I tell you that every millennia, these people go from paradise to a strange holiday. The destination of this strange holiday is a place called planet Earth. Now, the reason they go there is because they are not aware of what their world is and what they've achieved and it's not until they visit the planet earth until they realize what they have achieved and what they've been taking for an advantage you, you're getting the message I'm, I'm making here okay and so this is my introduction to the next teaching subject on reincarnation and why the Tibetan masters and the Egyptians and others put such a massive importance on something which should have everyone should have the access to it which is the procedure of death now the reason it's so important is because in an unbroken chain in Tibet for 2,500 years between master and student in the subject of metaphysics. These clairvoyants would visit the heavenly fields or the um, Akashic record, whatever you want to call it. And they found, the Dalai Lamas found that the same information was coming back for hundreds and hundreds of years. And when they compared it to other sources, it was coming back. And my guide, Lob Sang T. Rumpa, he was um, a, born as a um, very advanced clairvoyant and was put with a master. And at the age of eight, he had to go through the ceremony of the little death. Now, he could leave his body at will, but what they did was, underneath the patola, are lava tubes and down in these lava tubes are huge tons of what doors that pivot on a tiny little area with effortless and the inside is secret rooms and in this one secret room and just quickly to change the subject I want to talk to you about the industrial military complex these are insanely addicted companies who have the contracts to supply technology 
and warfare to the armed forces. Now, why would their company's names turn up in the credits of certain movies? Now, if I'm going to mention some of these movies to you, you'll start to figure out why. One of the movies was the movie called Coneheads. Do you remember Coneheads? Now, when you find an elongated skull, it is one of two things happening. One, it was uh, taped up and bandaged to grow elongatedly. Or two, it, re it contained an extra 33% mass, which cannot be done through binding. So it looks like that one generation was trying to imitate the other to get benefits. And so when China discovered in their 24 pyramids these two giant conehead type bodies, right, they lost so much face because they were supposed to be the first people on their continent that they, they ordered their farmers to grow crops straight over the pyramids. And so in the movie Coneheads, you'll see the industrial military complex companies. You'll also see it in Alien and, and, um, and Stargate and um, Predator and a whole bunch of other ones. And we'll get to the subject another time, but I'll explain to you what is behind all that. Basically, it is ridicule. Because if somebody mentions cone heads, what's the first thing you do? Now, the reason the Tibetans put so much emphasis on this is because of the following. For a millennia, we humans grew up with shaman as our basic religion. And our shaman was the church of nature they were just clairvoyance and so on every continent on every island throughout history are clairvoyants who discover the same things now these shamans would teach that um the when somebody dies because this took thousands of years, that for you to selfishly mourn and, you know, oh, why, Frank, did you leave me? You left me all alone with no one and the bills to pay. This greedy, selfish thing, because think about it, how many people have you lost to death that have died from wicked situations like long drawn out cancers and shit okay don't you think it's a godsend if you love that person that they are now free of the body and they're in a dimension where they just simply think and therefore it is kind of like being the star of the mood of i dream of genie and so the correct way to grieve was to celebrate somebody's life and so when you did this artificial grief, oh, why? what this does is it works like a bungee cord and pulls on the poor soul who's trying to get to the heavenly fields. Now, what I'm saying to you is there's a lot of things that can go wrong, especially because of free will. Heaven is what you perceive it to be. My guide wrote 27 books, and many of his books on metaphysics ended up in prisons. And one day he was in the Akashic Record, in the astral, with his Lama friends. And they discovered people who had benefited on death row and other situations in prison, where when they were at their death, because they didn't believe in anything, then when they found themselves thinking, yet they were in absolute darkness and their legs were swinging in the air. I have been through this experience in a form of lucid dreaming. What happens is, 
Atheists call out for God usually on two occasions. One is during a really good orgasm. And two is at this time of being in tar. Now the darkness is in infinite directions for infinity. And then you realize that, my God, I can't die. I'm already dead. I'm going to lose my mind. And so the atheist then calls out um, to... Now, I'm not talking about religion here. I'm talking about God. And calls out, please help me, because he remembered one or two sentences in one of Lobson Rumpus' books about heaven is what you perceive it to be. And at that particular moment, the veil is then lifted and all of his loved ones move forward and greet him, yet they explain that they couldn't come forward prior because of the law of free will. Now, you hear people that say, oh, if there was a God, why does he let babies die? Which is so ignorant. Think about our society, for example. We have free will. That means when we make mistakes, and fuck up, we can learn from that mistake. So there's no sin. But um, imagine a world that has no free will. Think about that for a moment. That would mean that every fart, every time you blinked, every breath you took, every eye, every thought, regardless, was done for you by your creator which perceives the concept of why we fucking live now i call these teachings openings on the synopsis pathways that haven't been opened before now on my next video i'm going to introduce you who wish to know the um, basic um, system involved in the death process and why it is so important and what happens when somebody dies and they're not aware of it. And then I'm going to give you so many bizarre examples that you'll realize there are too many genres of examples here. They can all be bullshitting. And so this is my way of behaving compassionately towards you. You, you're the people who are less informed than I. And I want you to think of it as a, a um, spider web about the third of the size of heaven. And if you pass through, well, good luck to you, but a lot of people get stuck. That is all for now until the first episode. I am Ricky388. I teach matters of metaphysics and answers to spiritual questions. Love and light.